Let's pick up the story in Matthew 8, verse 2. On his knees before Jesus, the man begs, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus doesn't flinch. He doesn't hesitate. He reaches out and he touches the man and says, I am willing, be healed. And as you might expect, the leprosy dissolved immediately. In Matthew's gospel, this healing is the first real demonstration of Jesus' power that he expounded upon. They knew him. I mean, it describes him as a healer before this, like before the Sermon on the Mount. But this is the first one that's really explained. And that's not coincidental. Everything about the encounter describes God's goodness in a way that flies in the face of what people believed about God since Moses. Remember that in the years after the Ten Commandments, religious leaders created many laws beyond the original 613. Now, those laws, yes, did include instructions for lepers to be isolated, and that was to preserve the health of the people. But humans took it further. Still many years from a full revelation of good and evil. We talked about that in the last message. And still many more years, many, many more years, from any scientific explanations for disease, people interpreted leprosy back then as one of God's punishments for sin. And they therefore treated lepers as one of God's enemies. But if God was mad at lepers, Jesus sure didn't show it. His reaction was quite the opposite, actually. Most obviously, he reached out and touched the man. That was one demonstration that he is God in the flesh. But there's more here than what meets the eye, at least to we modern readers. Back then, God and sinners could not be present together without some sort of buffer. And this began again in the days of Moses. He spoke, God spoke, through smoke on Mount Sinai, and he warned the people that they may no longer approach his presence, that they would die if they did. The perfect and the imperfect could not come together anymore. At this point in history, it is said that God hid his face from people. Now, that doesn't mean that he was against them always. In Scripture, one's face is symbolic of their true character. Hiding his face meant that God stopped relating to people through his essence of unfailing love and pure grace. Again, we talked about that in the last message. No doubt he still showed those qualities. Look what he says to Moses there in Exodus 33, verse 19. He says, I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. And he did. He showed glimpses of it. But, the Lord said, you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. And from that moment forward, though God remained present with his people, they mostly heard him speak from a distance and saw his radiance behind a cloud. Moses was privileged to see his back. Nobody saw his face until Jesus. Get this. When the leprous man knelt before Jesus, the Lord could have offered mercy without touching him. He could have granted compassion without looking into his eyes. Yet Jesus stooped down and met the man at his level. In doing so, yes, he proved his immunity to disease. That's great. To a people who believe that disease is the product of God's punishment, Jesus' healing expressed both a willingness and ability to forgive sin. That is huge. More amazing, though. Jesus conveyed that God is here among imperfect people to reconcile them with his face. That's a message that he continued with nearly every subsequent healing. You'll notice sometimes in the Gospels, like when he healed the bleeding woman. He turned to her. He faced the people. 
But this was only the beginning. Jesus had much more to say through what he did.